deadlock handling in dbms what is deadlock handling what are deadlocks what actually causes deadlocks and how can it be detected how can we prevent from system deadlock what is wait and die and wait and wound scheme hello everyone i am sukanya from goedu hub technologies and in this video we are going to discuss about deadlock handling in dbms in the previous video we have studied about transaction and during a transaction if the other transaction has to wait for a resource or fail for any changes then there are chances that there may occur a deadlock in the system so deadlock is nothing but a condition wherein two or more tasks are waiting for each other in order to be finished but none of the task is willing to give up the resources that the other tasks need in such situation a deadlock arises and a waiting for forever state also happens for example if r1 and r2 are two resources and p1 and p2 are processes so p1 holds resource of r2 and requires r1 for a while similarly process 2 holds the resource r1 and requires r2 for a while so here is a deadlock condition occurring real world example are deadlocks are traffic which is going only in one direction and a bridge considered as a resource then deadlock happens it can be revolved if one car backs up or preempt resource or roll back several cars may be backed up in deadlock situation so starvation is possible starvation is waiting for a long time for the resource now how can deadlock be avoided what is deadlock avoidance when a deadlock is stuck in a database then it is better to avoid the database rather than aborting or restarting that particular database because that is a waste of time and resource so deadlock avoidance mechanism is used to detect any deadlock situation in advance for that a method like wait for gaf is made for that all the resources and the processes are already being studied and then a deadlock situation if arised may be changed or maybe some other resources can be allotted so for larger databases deadlock prevention method can be used now deadlock can be avoided if resources are allotted in such a way that it avoids the deadlock occurrence there are two algorithms for it for deadlock avoidance that is wait and die and the next is wound and wait so how is if the older process needs a resource held by the younger process younger means just in process of any transaction or any system then the wait die is for the older process and wait wound is for the younger process dies it automatically reject back out of the system and if the younger process needs a resource which is hold by the older one then the younger process has to die in the wait and die because the older process has done lot more changes so it needs the resource and in wait and wound the younger process has to wait rather than just dying or committing how can a deadlock be detected in a particular transaction so when a transaction waits indefinitely to obtain a lock the database management system should detect whether the transaction is involved in a deadlock or not if it is involved in a deadlock then obviously deadlock avoidance theorem has to be applied then the resource scheduler is one of the thing that keeps the track of all the resources allocated by the end of the process which resource is getting free which is in use which is just idle in the system so that that resource could be revoked all such things are kept in track with the help of a resource scheduler thus if there is a deadlock it is known as the resource scheduler to simplify it this is how a deadlock is detected deadlock can be detected through the help of a resource scheduler because if there is no resource then obviously the processes has to wait and there is an occurrence of deadlock there is a wait for graph and the wait for graph is one of the methods for detecting the deadlock situation if any deadlock situation occur for example t1 has to wait for lock r1 and t2 similarly has to wait for the lock r2 and thus there is a loop or a cycle in the graph created and then there is a deadlock if there is any loop or any cycle created for the wait for graph in any particular transaction then it occurs a deadlock there should be no cycle how can we prevent a deadlock this we have studied in os also the deadlock prevention method is suitable for large databases if the resources are allocated in such a way that all the deadlock never occurs deadlock never occurs or it can be prevented so what are the preventive measures or method the first is mutual exclusion at least one resource must be held in non shareable mode one resource should be non shareable it should not be shared so that if any process request the resource it can be released easily 
The next prevention method is hold and wait. A process must be simultaneously holding at least one resource and waiting for at least one resource that is currently held by someone else. So hold and wait simultaneously could be made to prevent a deadlock situation. No preemption. Once a process is holding a resource, then that resource can be taken away after the process voluntarily releases it. Not in the middle it has to leave it, that is no preemption. After the complete execution of that transaction happens, then only the resource is released voluntarily by the process. The next is circular wait. There is a set of processes P0 to Pn. Much exists for every Pi, there is a resource waiting process. Now this condition is to be made simpler or easier to deal with the condition of the four considered separately. So together they can be made. Next is a scheme that is wait and die scheme. We have studied about two schemes that is wound and wait and the wait and die. So in this particular scheme, if a transaction request for a resource which is already held by a conflicting lock by another transaction, then database management system simply checks the timestamp of both the transaction. There are what time they both begin. It allows the older transaction to wait until the resource is available and the younger transaction automatically dies. Similarly, in the wound and wait scheme, if the older transaction requests for a resource which is held by the younger one, then the older transaction forces the younger one to kill the transaction and release the resource. But the younger transaction doesn't die, it just kills its transaction and releases it. After the minute delay, the younger transaction is restarted with the same timestamp and if the older transaction has held any resource requested by the younger one, then the younger one can ask to wait until the older releases it. This is the wound and wait scheme. If Now we are going to take an example of the deadlock avoidance scheme and we are going to study that at what algorithm basically deadlocks are managed. So it is an example of deadlock handling. For deadlock avoidance, we have banker's algorithm. Now, what does this algorithm states? Banker's algorithm is a resource allocation and deadlock avoidance algorithm. This is the basic statement that it gives the resource, it allocates the resource to the process and avoids the deadlock, which tests all the requests made by the process for resources. It checks for the safe state. If after granting request system remains in the safe state, then it allows the request. And if it doesn't occur to be in a safe state, then it doesn't allow the request to make the process. What are the inputs of banker's algorithm? Maximum need resource by each process. What are the currently allocated resource to each process? And maximum free available resource to the system. So, data structures are used for implementing the banker's algorithm are, firstly, it requires an available array for the available resources. For a maximum, it also requires a two-dimensional array for the demand of each process of the system and how the resources would be given to the processes. For the allocation also it requires a 2D array and similarly for the need it also requires an array and need is actually maximum minus the allocation. That what we have allocated minus the maximum gives us the need of any particular resource. This is the safety algorithm. The very first step is let work and finish be vectors of length m and n respectively. Initialize work is available, that is available resources. Finish i is false for i 1, 2, 3 up to n. Find an i such that both finish i is equals to false and need of i is less than equals to work. If no such i exists, then directly go to the step 4 and if there exist, then allocate the resource, work plus allocation and then finish the i. Otherwise, finish with the help true that there is, system is already in the safe state. Now there is a resource request algorithm also that how can we resource, how can we assess the resource request on the basis of a particular algorithm. So let there be request i which is the request array for the processes pi. So in the request i array having j elements k means the process pi wants k instances of resource rj. When the re request for resources is made by the process pi, the following action is taken. If request i is less than equals to the need, then go to the step 2, otherwise raise an error condition that since the process has exceeded its maximum claim, it cannot make more request. If the request 
is less than equals to the available amount of resources then go to the step 3 otherwise the process has to wait since the resources are not yet available that means it has been allocated to some other process in the system however the system pretend to have allocated the requested resource to process pi by modifying the state as available is equals to available minus request i allocation is equal to allocation of i plus the request and similar to the need is need minus the request for example if this is the allocation array and this is the request array then the total we have is 5 amounts and the allocation to be done is 5 4 and 3 which is the sum of x sum of y and sum of z now the available is total minus allocation according to the formula so total is 5 allocation is done to 5 4 and 3 so now available resources are 0 1 and 2 now in step 1 what we do is with the instances available currently only the requirement of process pi will be satisfied only the first process can be satisfied because process 1 needs the uh, 2 0 and 1 and we what we have available is 0 1 and 2 so it can only be satisfied of the this request only this request can be satisfied p1 request can be satisfied so p1 allocated in the request resources and its completion is done so when we have given that request available to the allocation then it comes up to the sum of an array 2 1 and 3 similarly for step 2 we will check that now 2 1 and 3 whom we can allocate this particular resource and then we will calculate the new available similarly after allocating all the resources we are going to check the uh, safe state of the system that p1 p0 which all processes can be executed and the system is in a safe state and then process p2 will be executed at the last because it has the maximum available and the request so it will be executed at the last because now it is having five we have five resources available hence the option c is correct that which of the particular resources will going to execute at the last so p2 is going to execute we have calculated with the help of total that is total is equals to available is equals to total minus the allocation so what are the total resources we have and then we allocate to the process coming in the instances one by one so this is how deadlock is handled we have studied by the end of this video that how can we avoid the deadlock what are the prevention schemes and then what is the banker's algorithm for deadlock avoidance and then an example for more tutorial videos, we will look into other set of video. Thank you.